What's up folks, I am SJ from 10 Points of Slashing and this video is about a franchise that is extremely near and dear to my heart. Tomb Raider 1, 2, and 3 were remastered for modern consoles in February and I cannot get enough of them. I am having a nostalgia aneurysm and I am dying to talk about what made me love these games as a kid and what ultimately led to my love of adventuring and adrenaline rushes as an adult. 10 Points of Slashing exists to share our passion for the video games that we love, and I would be doing the channel a disservice if I didn't talk about the franchise that defined my love of gaming. There is a magic that is inherent to these games, and given the fact that a remaster I have been hoping for for almost 30 years has finally hit the shelves, I want to celebrate that magic. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's talk Tomb Raider. The first three games in the Tomb Raider series were what I believe to be the absolute high point of the entire franchise, for a number of reasons. But for this video, I'm only going to be focusing on three of those. The three things that I feel are the biggest and most important contributors to how incredible and timeless these games are. So let's dive in and get the nostalgia gears turning. First and foremost, the obvious one, exploration. At the time that the first three Tomb Raider games were released, there honestly wasn't much in the way of 3D gaming. All I personally had really played in the 3D department at the time was Crash Bandicoot, which was an extremely linear game. There were 3D environments, sure, but you were confined to the straight line path that Crash was moving in. I remember being a kid back then and looking out to the side of the path and thinking, I want to go there. And I'd spend hours trying to glitch myself through the geometry and get to the cool little nook I saw off the beaten path. And then I played Tomb Raider, and with essentially every single space that you can see in the 3D world in front of you, if you want to go there, you can. And not only is it possible, you are encouraged to go there. One of the biggest complaints that I've heard regarding the early Tomb Raider games is actually one of my favorite things about it, backtracking. Your objective in pretty much every level is typically something along the lines of find a lever to open a door to another lever that opens a door to a key that you need to open a door to find another key that opens the door to an area with three more key receptacles that open the door to the next level, but all of those keys are back before the first lever. The game has you moving back and forth between old and new areas constantly. Like I said, the key you need to get to Area 3 is back in Area 1 and you missed it because you got caught up with the puzzles you found in Area 2. Tomb Raider forces you to explore every nook and cranny of the levels, and there are some extremely rewarding moments that come as a result of that, like accidentally finding a secret or a new weapon or just discovering an awesome view in a level. It's wonderful and it just feels great, man. And then there's Tomb Raider's sense of progression. One of the things that appealed to me most about these games was the fact that each game was a globe-spanning adventure. Each game consisted of several sections that took place in one particular area of the world. And once you had progressed far enough in that area and collected the artifact or piece of knowledge that led you there, boom! you moved on to the next section, and that sense of progression was incredibly rewarding. Not only did you feel like you accomplished something because you found what you were looking for, you were rewarded with an entirely new environment to explore. An environment that had its own unique idiosyncrasies, its own puzzles, its own traps. You felt like you were starting another game within the one you were already playing. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I feel like most people that enjoyed Tomb Raider back then are the same kinds of people that enjoy games like Dark Souls today. There's a wonderful rush of adrenaline when you've been banging your head against the wall trying to figure out the same damn puzzle over and over again, or the same platforming section that was stumping you for days. And then you get it, you finally figure it out, and the game moves you to a brand new section that fills you with that trademark sense of wonder all over again. That rush of adrenaline, to me, is identical to the one you feel when you finally take down the boss in Dark Souls that had you stuck. It's a system that inherently rewards the player for their hard work. When you beat a level in Tomb Raider, you feel like you've genuinely accomplished something. You feel like you've earned the right to move into the next area. And when the next area is stunning and beautiful, set in a completely different color palette than the one you were feeling stuck in, it's just incredible, man. I love it. 
And lastly, I'd like to speak on the element of gameplay within Tomb Raider that I really feel is the most important and unique aspect of these games. It's something you really don't see much of anymore, but was pretty prevalent in late 90s gaming, and to me, it is what makes Tomb Raider, Tomb Raider. Ladies and gentlemen, the sense of isolation. The big overarching point of Tomb Raider is literally in the name of the franchise. You raid tombs. You explore places that no one has set foot in in hundreds, if not thousands of years. You navigate massive underground complexes, solving puzzles and delving into ruined structures built by a society of ancient people long ago, armed with nothing but your wits and a shitload of guns and a PlayStation controller for some reason. These are the things most people think of when they think Tomb Raider. They think about the tombs, the environments, the level design, and the level of immersion that they have as a player when navigating these places. The, deve <laughs> the developers of these games absolutely nailed communicating how truly alone you feel when exploring through the isolation that you feel as a character. Back then, Lara didn't carry around a radio that gave her an instant connection to another person to help guide her or fill the silence. It was just her, or just you completely alone in darkness and in silence. And every now and then, the incredibly talented Nathan McCree would sprinkle in a mere few seconds of breathtaking music when you emerge from a passageway into an overlook of a massive room or cavern, and you felt like you discovered something. You felt like you were actually standing where no one has stood in thousands of years. Even in levels that featured human enemies that may have arrived there before you, the sense of isolation was unreal, and every aspect of the game design lent itself to that isolation. The levels themselves, the limited draw distance that would darken areas of the level so you had no idea what was coming until you went there. The mind-blowing audio design. There wasn't a constant music track playing in the background. Instead, most levels made use of ambient sound effects that constantly looped. The sounds of rocks falling, water dripping, creatures' footsteps echoing through the area. All of these things combined to make you truly feel that you were alone and genuinely exploring a place that hadn't seen another human being in a very long time. Now, I'd like to talk about three examples of levels that I believe masterfully execute on all three of those major points I've just talked about. While these are three of my absolute favorite levels across the first three Tomb Raider games, this is by no means a top three list, although my definitive favorite level will be making an appearance. In the first Tomb Raider, we have a level called The Cistern. While delving deep underneath an ancient folly in Greece, which, by the way, a folly is just a beautiful building with no discernible purpose that looks to pretty much just be ornamental in nature. I looked that up. This is one of the things that I love about Tomb Raider. It makes you look stuff up and do research and learn about things that are super interesting. For a long time, I thought that the name just referred to St. Francis being a fool, and I had no idea why until I looked this up. I'm sure there are a bunch of other people out there that had this same experience, but anyway. Lara makes a number of incredible discoveries. An ancient coliseum, the palace of the fabled King Midas himself, and this gigantic underground cistern. Nathan McCree comes at you fucking swinging when you first walk out into the namesake section of this level, and it feels so good. Especially re-experiencing that feeling in the snappy new HD graphics that the remaster gave us. There's just something about that room that just does it for me, man. I'm sure it has a lot to do with the fact that the first section of the level is some very closed-in spaces with minor platforming that gets you thinking, ah. So this is the entire level. And then it's just not. The game opens up and gives you this massive space to explore and collect key after key and pull lever after lever. This is the ultimate example of that classic Tomb Raider gameplay and I just love it. Given the diverse nature of the grease levels in general, when you're hit with this area, it feels different. You feel like you've discovered something. And the entire time that you're exploring this massive and empty space, Pierre is tailing you, lurking in the shadows, waiting for his opportunity to take shots at you. You feel like you're being hunted, and it's just freaking awesome. 
The cistern is a great example of exploration, sense of progression, and isolation all wrapped up into one blocky but beautiful package. Next, in Tomb Raider 2, while exploring the hundred-year-old wreck of a luxury liner deep in the ocean, Lara merges into a massive underground cavern that houses the deck of the ship. I know it's a pretty unpopular opinion, but this is, without a doubt, my absolute favorite level in all of Tomb Raider. Partly because of the level itself, and partly because of the experience that I had in this level. The level of isolation built into this level is unreal. You're by yourself in a massive cavern miles beneath the surface of the ocean that houses the wreck of a ship. Even when enemy shooters come around the corner blasting at you, it doesn't break that sense of immersion. You jump out of your skin, you handle it, and then you're left alone again, staring out at a vast expanse of darkness. I honestly feel like the human enemies in the level actually help add to the isolation, because every time you take one down, you're left with that feeling of being alone all over again. For a brief moment in time, you were down there with another human, and then they're gone. It's just unsettling, dude. Maybe my fear of deep water helps add to this, but this is probably the most isolated I've felt in any area of Tomb Raider, to include the weird, inexplicable, extra-dimensional spaces that Lara explores. And when I was a kid, my dad and I got stuck in this level for what felt like ages. There was a particular jump we fudged that made us believe that that wasn't the correct path. So we ran around mindlessly in this massive cavern, looking for another route for a long time before we tried that jump again and nailed it, and I loved every moment of that exploration. To this day, I still feel that isolation and terror creep in a little bit, even though I know exactly what is around the corner at all times. I really feel that the deck is a masterclass in environment design. And once you beat this level, you are slapped in the face and quite literally snow blinded with the Tibetan foothills. A completely new and different, incredibly well lit level that takes place in a completely different region. The level is just straight up perfect Tomb Raider and I cannot say enough good things about it. Then we have the first section of Tomb Raider 3, which drops us right into the jungles of India. While most of the first level of the game takes place outdoors, you do come across a few sections that take place in the ruins surrounding the area. But I know I'm not just speaking for myself here when I say that none of that could have prepared me for the first time I slid down into the temple ruins. The outdoorsy, ambient audio track of wind blowing and birds chirping suddenly cuts out, and you're left with the super creepy sounds of echoing footsteps and debris falling in the background. The area around you is suddenly violently dark and you have to light a flare. There's an eerie, dull, green-blue lighting that reflects off of the surfaces in this temple. It's breathtaking and terrifying if you're nine years old and playing this on an extremely poorly lit rear projection television that's probably twice as old as you are. I'm not kidding when I say that this level scared me so much as a kid that as soon as I slid down into that temple for the first time, I aggressively no. noped out of there and slapped down my first level skip cheat. I never finished this level as a kid, but when I revisited it years later, I was absolutely captivated by it. I wanted to explore everything in this temple. It's such a stark contrast to the jungle you just slogged through to get there, and you feel so freaking alone. This level absolutely exemplifies everything that I love about Tomb Raider, and again, I just can't sing its praises loud enough. And that goes for the entire franchise. I am fortunate enough to have experienced Tomb Raider for the first time as a kid in the 90s. I was a wide-eyed little boy pretty aimlessly struggling through not just these blocky environments for the first time, but video games in general. The sense of wonder and joy that I felt while playing these games was massively amplified by the fact that I was a child. I can't really imagine grown adults in 2024 having quite the same experience I did, but nonetheless, for me, Tomb Raider was, is, and forever will be a feeling. And to those of you experiencing that feeling for the first time with the remasters, to all of the newly christened Tomb Raiders out there, welcome. We're glad to have you.
Thank you so much for checking this video and the channel out. If you like what we do here, please subscribe and stay tuned for more. We just shot a collaboration video with another popular Tomb Raider content creator, so if you want more Tomb Raider, keep an eye out for that video in the future. Again, I can't say it enough. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for watching this video, and I hope you have an amazing day. And enjoy the remasters. See ya. <laughs>